Today is going to be a bit different. We're going to talk about something relevant for once. The saddest Overwatch Champion Series team up to this point. When it came to Champion Series rolling out the gates, I was a person who was more excited because of the rosters that we would be able to see. Without budgeting or salaries, the most crazy stuff would be possible. Teams like WAC, for instance, in Overwatch League, that team would be too expensive for any org to reliably want to sign it. We also get some grassroots stuff like Vesta Crew, who didn't win a single map up to this point. So yeah, it's not all good. Watching them get pounded into oblivion day after day was becoming more sad than anything. But then we had a team filled with players who I thought were going to be a hood classic. Genesis. You have Kalios and Kellen as tanks, Decay and Choice Wan at DPS, then Teru and Maka at support, which obviously was the worrying signs. Teru was once a DPS player who joined Vancouver Titans, then went to flex support on Hangzhou Spark and Washington Justice, now becoming a main support player. Teru apparently thinks he's the second coming of Violet. Regardless of the worrying signs, I was excited to see Decay and Choi as a DPS line. Both of these players have been stuck on awful teams for most of their careers. Some viewers were skeptical of Decay throughout his tenure, but his year on Boston really proved how good of a player he was. Being exceptional at Tracer and Genji all throughout that year, one of the best in the league actually. Choi had a good team around him in 2023 as well. Finally, Guangzhou became good with Piggy on tank, Jimmy was frying, so we got to see Choi spread his wings a bit. But even before this, he was always putting out good performances when Guangzhou was at their worst. Kellen was on NYXL, a very hyped up main tank prospect in 2022. Kellen was probably the best player on this team, but that's not really saying much because you're playing alongside Gangnam Jin main support. 2023 was a bit better, but still middling in comparison to what was promised from the streets. Kalios was a good player who just never really got fielded. He started on Boston Uprising in Season 1, got dropped, grinded in contenders, and came back in 2021 showing good Zarya performances where teams saw he was a good player and gave him a few more chances. Maka was the only unknown quantity coming from the championship Florida Mayhem. That's right, he's a champion who didn't play so it doesn't really matter. The only person we worship in this house who didn't play for his ring is Who Are You. Gunba said Maka was a good prospect and people rolled with it considering how the community knows how Gunba thinks. He's a very cut and dry person finding a good pickup in the rough while trying to form them into better players. Genesis was not expected to be a world beater. They weren't going to beat WAC or Team Falcons, but people thought like, yeah, these guys are going to crush Vesta Crew as everyone did. Poker Face and Sinprissa have no chance either. People had Yeti lower on the tier list, lumping Genesis up with Runaway as a team who scratched the surface of top tier, but more of a mid-table contender. The first match Genesis had was against WAC, where it was an expected loss. Getting 3-0'd by WAC is something we all knew was coming. Who cares about this? The players on Genesis just aren't at the caliber of WAC, and there's nothing else to it. Their next match was against Runaway, which was one of the best matches in Overwatch Champion Series so far. If you haven't watched it, I actually would because it was really good. There was a lot of crazy moments. Prophet was an absolute animal with the Cassidy play. His performance was just like, holy shit, it was crazy. This kid would not miss at all, especially on the last map. Prophet put Decay in the ground on Widow. He straight carried that map. My personal favorite moment was one of the most atrocious beats in competitive Overwatch history, and words cannot describe the crime scene. That both of these map pieces are going to be taken out with the K now falling. As the beat gets committed by Teru, means that Runaway are in with a pinch. He actually solo beated for no reason whatsoever. I refuse to believe that was anything but a fat finger, like not even a gold player would think that's a good idea. Teru doing this lost Genesis that map 100%. Regardless of the egregious misplays, we expected this one to be a good match. Everyone had Runaway and Genesis close to each other in Korea power rankings, so we thought it was fine for them to lose. Genesis is just going to come out swinging next. Poker Face is their next opponent. Like, these kids are garbage. They're just trash, right? No chance whatsoever. If only that was the case. I will give Teru some credit. He did make some good Lucio plays throughout the match. A slight redemption that only lasted a day. We had a few maps that could have gone either way, especially on push. But again, something seemed off. Genesis was just really uncoordinated all throughout. 
where Decay is the only person actually making any semblance of a play. They had Kalios on tank for the entire series, which didn't work out very well. Kalios had moments of feeding, awful misplays, the backline wasn't really putting up good performances, Choi Sewan played some maps like his monitor was off, confusing a lot of viewers, like what is even happening here? A team Genesis was favored against beat them 3-1 and they were outplayed at every single role aside from Decay. We entered MAGA week where Team Falcons pissed in the Genesis Cheerios and there's no need to really comment on this, the match wasn't close whatsoever. We've gone through this really quick, but Genesis was already 0-4. Maybe you guys didn't, but I had Genesis towards the middle of the pack. The runaway match was close and that poker face one had a couple close calls, but the awful coordination and inconsistent performances from individual players was just unexpected from Genesis, at least to me. Aside from the back line, of course. One thing I did notice was how after that runaway match specifically, Genesis got worse and worse. The second match of Malga Week was against Vesta Crew, and Genesis won, of course, acquiring their first victory, being a participation trophy essentially. As we said with Vesta, they just can't compete with any player in OWCS Korea, and this victory was honestly nothing to be happy about. Sinprisa Gaming was an opponent Genesis needed to beat. It was dire straits now. We wanted to see Genesis actually win a real match. With the level of players on this roster, their results shouldn't be as bad as they are. Regardless of opinions on Kellen, he isn't that bad. Kelios is a good overall player. Decay is obviously the best player on this team. Choi Suwon always had good performances on Guangzhou. And our only real question was the backline. 100% the weakest part of the team. And when I look at this Genesis roster of players, even during the Malga week, I wasn't expecting them to get absolutely flattened by Sinprisa Gaming. This was a 3-0. Not close at all in any sense of the imagination. It looked like Team Falcons or Whack going against Vesta Crew. It was that level of domination. We had that similar issue of no one being on the same page. And even after getting a coach, I had no idea this happened until the guy came up on stage. But Undyne was a coach for New York Excelsior in 2021 and 2022. Both of those years, NYXL was a bottom five team in the league. So yeah. When I read comments about Genesis, I see people trying to push the blame on Kellen, others try to push it on Kalios when it comes to the tank, but that's the thing. It doesn't matter which one plays. Everything looks like a quick play match for Genesis. Everyone's just running around doing their own thing. Decay is sitting there attempting to win on his own, which he does well for himself. And again, Decay is clearly the best player on this team. But if you've watched competitive Overwatch in the past, that sounds familiar, right? Decay doing everything in his power, but no matter how much sweat drips onto the table, the kid can't win. Yeah, 2021 Washington Justice. Stuck in endless turmoil, no matter what Decay would do, his team always loses. It really makes you feel bad for him since he is a really good player, and watching a Genesis match is essentially looking at four little monkeys and their father trying to bring them all up a tree. It's horrible. It's nothing anyone should want to look at. If we look at the Washington Justice of 2021 real quick, that was supposed to be a good team as well, where they ended up fluctuating as a top team one week, and then the next one they were one of the worst teams in the world. I find it interesting that Genesis is oddly similar to it. The tanks were supposed to be really good, Mag and Fury were said to be a fantastic tank line, granted way more overhyped than Kellen and Kalios, but still, neither Justice or Genesis tanks have any synergy with their team, perpetually feeding, teamfight initiations are lackluster, and it looks like nothing's going on half the time. The DPS line of Decay and Assassin was supposed to be a top tier DPS duo, judging from what we know about Decay, Assassin was exceptional in contenders, and this situation ended very similarly to Choi and Decay. Decay is the one having the good performances, while Choi is very hot and cold. One day he looks like one of the best DPS players in the region, and other times he's barely doing anything, just like Assassin. And finally, the support line of Genesis correlates perfectly with Bebe and Closer, the noticeable weakest part of the team. The player quality way below everyone else on the team, and they don't really feel like they fit. Creating this shitstorm of train wreck after train wreck, 
losing to teams they shouldn't be losing to, or when it came to Justice, randomly winning against teams that they shouldn't beat. Granted, when it comes to Genesis, they've only beaten Vesta Crew, and that's essentially a free win for anyone, but the Washington Justice and Genesis similarities are shockingly aligned. After Genesis had their first in Persa Gaming match, Yeti beat them into a pulp, 3 0 them again. Finally, in their last round robin match, Genesis lost 3 0 against FTG. What a shocker. Genesis ended the round robin 1 in 7. Throughout three metas, Genesis was unexpectedly garbage. I understand people wrote them off from the beginning with the Teru Maka backline. To be fair, Teru on flex support isn't that bad. Even mechanically with Lucio, he's not horrible at DPS Lucio. It's just the decision making and positioning that makes him not good. I feel he could be coached into becoming a better main support. I feel the talent is there. But obviously, they don't seem to have a person to really whip them into shape. Like, where is the coach to get the club out and start hitting the table with it? It doesn't appear this is a one-person issue. It seems like everyone, aside from Decay, has a problem meshing together as a team. The tank changes don't seem to make any difference when they rotate Kalios or Kellen in. Adding the coach Undyne didn't help. There wasn't this Yeti situation where the players and team really improved over time and more synergy was built. Genesis just overall is a huge question mark going forwards and so far the most disappointing team I've seen yet in Champion Series. Most recently in the last chance qualifier, Genesis actually did beat Runaway, I'll give them that, a victory against a real team. Unfortunately, Runaway sort of bombed out during the LCQ, which is quite unfortunate, but at least their entire round robin resulted in four wins and four losses, so the disappointment isn't that bad. Genesis then had a rematch with Sinprissa, where they lost 3-2, a much better showing in what we've seen previously, and the final LCQ match was against Pokerface, where Genesis lost 3-1, ending their stage. No one expected Genesis to be one of the worst teams in Korea, and if you don't count Vesta Crew as a team, which I don't, Genesis is the worst team in Korea. Their results have honestly just made them a more saddening team than anything else. Again, expectations were not 2021 Washington Justice levels of destroying the entire league, but we're in a similar situation here with Genesis. Decay trying to be a one-man army, bad tank coordination, and a stinky support lineup. It's weird how history is actually repeating itself, but I hope next stage, Genesis gets it together and becomes a better team. Maybe replace the backline, that'd be a good start. Or just drop everyone that's not Decay, that works too. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on Genesis. Were you just as disappointed as I was in their performances? Make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching to the end. Subscribe to the channel for more Overwatch related content if you haven't already. And also check out that playlist I have on the screen for even more competitive Overwatch related content.